to the PHDJ Podcast. Let's go. With your hosts, Mike Walter, owner of Elite Entertainment in New Jersey, and Joe Bunn, owner of Bunn DJ Company in North Carolina. Get ready to learn from two mobile DJ industry veterans with over 200 episodes under their belt. It's time for the PHDJ Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the PHDJ podcast uh, with a different voice uh, from me than normal. I've got a a bit of a cold, but I'm Joe Bunn, and right there is my friend Mike Walter. What's up, Mike? How are you, Joe? Yeah, you sound a little nasally this morning. I I am. I don't feel I don't feel bad, but I do have like uh, extreme runny nose condition. And it's not allergies, right? That allergy. No, no, I've never had that. Knock on wood, I've never had allergies. So. I I think one of my my rugrat kids passed on his That happens, uh, virus. right? Children will yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> they, well, they hope do. it's not they hope do. it's not the virus. No, I don't yeah. I I'm hoping not either. <laughs> but anyway, uh we got a music episode today. I know you guys love those. Mike and I love doing these. Uh All music we, it's our favorite topic. It definitely. Yeah. yeah. And we always um you know, learn from each other. Learn from you guys when you when you comment under under the video or under the, um, the recording of this. So please, please uh, share your input uh, after you have a listen. So, Mike, uh, before we get into the 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 main topics today, the main musical categories today, t- tell us about your your. Yeah, I had a learning experience <laughs> in the last couple of weeks, and and when I say learning experience, I'm sure a lot of listeners are going to roll their eyes and go, "God, you're so out of touch." But so twice in the last month, I have had the term "ratchet <laughs> shit" thrown at me. Once was just some <laughs> drunk lady at the end of the night. You got to end this party with some ratchet shit, and like it was, she was so wasted. I just gave her a thumbs up, and I was like, "Yeah," but then like a week <laughs> later, somebody came up and said hey the bride wants you to play some ratchet shit and i said great what does that mean and she walks away and she goes you know ratchet shit and i was like i i don't know what right. that means right, right so i posed a question on one of the facebook play uh, <laughs> groups that i belong to dj playlist workshop and um and i got educated so joe you know obviously right because you were shaking your I- head before I do. I mean, I'm, just from a standpoint of, uh, again, uh, having teenage boys and things like that. It, and, and again, I think if you and I were uh, still dialed into the club slash school dance scene, we would be even more educated as well. Right. Right. But I am curious as to So in what, that situation, what would you have dropped? Uh, I probably would have led off with... <laughs> it depends on... Like current ratchet or like older ratchet. Like my my go to probably would have been Waka Flocka No Hands. Okay. Uh, and then it, anything in that kind of seventy BPM range. So there's like uh, Turn My Swag On, Soldier Boy. There's that song Swag Surfing where everybody kind of you know, is going. Um, more well, the current, answers I got on the playlist was much more modern stuff. More Megan, like Cardi B, Megan, Megan the Stallion, Stallion, Cardi right. B. Like that that WAP, was going to be my WAP would have been the first one to drop. Sure, and then Stacy, sure. you know Stacy Hall Carroll. She sure. she said she was like, well, that's ironic. She was literally putting the finishing touches on a mix, which she has since dropped. So if you want to hear nice. an entire mix of of uh, what she recommends. Uh, look her up. She's on Mixcloud, Stacey Hawk Carroll, and I listened yeah. to it. She put together an amazing... She pretty much yeah. said, uh, hip-hop with a good higher energy that makes you want to bounce, shake your br- butt, brings out your inner stripper. <laughs> that was mm, yeah. Stacey Hawk Carroll. Twerk, so twerk, twerk music. Twerking. I spent the rest of the day picturing Stacey Hawk Carroll um, bringing out <laughs> her in, inner stripper, and that was a fun afternoon. Um, so anyway, Jeez, that... that um, yeah, I didn't say that. that. Mike did. That was, that was, I said that, and I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> Um, Anyway, so I was educated with that, and I passed that education along to the listener. If you are asked to play some ratchet shit, uh, think new hip-hop, especially the ladies making you want to shake your butt. I'm curious, Digital Dave, when he listens to this, what he'll say, you know, what he would have gone to would he have gone to those older songs like i said or more the newer cardi well if he Megan? says the same thing as stacy i'm not going to picture him stripping so no 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 it's no, not a good no, look much it's as i like not it. not a good look uh but today uh by the way speaking a quick yeah, tangent go ahead 
sure. we haven't spoke we haven't spoken online uh podcast since uh chicago it was great seeing it's you out at marquee yeah man great and, and um and it was also awesome i got to not only hang with dave for a little while dave lander uh but his wife kelly was out there yeah and i got to i, I got I to have too, dinner yeah. with them and really it was it was fun hearing their their love story and and kind of getting to know her a little bit so yeah uh, just another reason why conventions are the bomb um yeah, man. The, 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 it, Marquee was a good experience this year, Mike. I, I'm I totally agree. Disappointed, yeah. sad, but uh, that I did not see you. But I promise you, I will be front row. Uh, oh, my seminar. Years. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. It's cool. I, I'm sorry. I, it was so good. Bad I got to see. We'll you. blame it on Casey. Yeah. Thank you, man. Let's blame it on Casey. Yeah. Blame it. All on right. Casey. Um, get to your main topic. <laughs> I like this. Yes. All right. So. Um, we, um, Mike and I were talking, I, I, maybe I was even doing a, a wedding or, um, you know, in the cocktail hour kind of a, a few weeks ago. And I said, Mike, let's talk about cocktail and dinner music. You know, we always kind of talk about bangers or ratchet music or, uh, whatever, whatever. And I said, you know, this, this part of the night is still so important for setting the vibe. Um, let's. You know, let's kind of get into the the songs that aren't necessarily. Let me just reel off six artists real quick. You know, Van Morrison, we get it. Sinatra, anybody in the Rat Pack era, we get it. New school crooners, i.e., Buble, Connick, we get that. Uh, let's kind of move more into things that you play. You know, and. People come up and go, "Ooh, who is this?" Or "I need this." You know what I mean? Like when you know you've kind of hit that nerve, of your soundtrack has cut through the din of just blah blah blah, endless chatter, and you've actually connected with somebody. So uh, that's what we're doing today. And, and totally Mike, I agree. Guess I, I think this is an oft overlooked um, genre totally. or time of the night for DJs. I, I think some DJs. I, I talked about this in my seminar in Chicago. If you're still just throwing yeah. on Kenny G. Uh, stop because you're wasting uh, you're Jeez. wasting a moment you can you can literally get people in the mood to party without yep. wasting a great dance song but my goal during cocktail hour I want to see people kind of bop in I like to yep. see them singing along a little bit snapping their Me fingers um, yep. I don't want to waste a great dance song but I'm but I but my I'm looking to prime the pump a little bit during that time Dude, it's a great, great point. Whether you mix or, or don't mix during this point, mm -hmm. um, you know, Brian Bonacici and I have talked about that before on different things in the vault and whatnot. I don't know that to me that's not as important as the selections and the selections are so key. And, and listen, I guarantee Mike would put his hand up. I'd put my hand up if, if I didn't say back in the day when I started, I didn't throw in a Kenny G CD or even there were these Pottery Barn CDs, Mike. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I hear your music playing. Sorry, I'm, you told me to get uh, one sorry. ready. I'm getting one ready. That's yeah. right. I I, uh, I literally remember being so, so stoked when I found these Pottery Barn. Yeah. Whatever they were, cocktail CDs. They had maybe two or three volumes. And you know, back when I was playing CDs, I'd literally be like, "Okay, dinner has started. Put it in, hit play." Like, right. and then wait until dancing started. And, and I was missing an opportunity. So. Since cocktails come first at a wedding, Mike, you want to start with cocktails? Yeah, so I was just queuing one up. Um, a couple years sure. ago, John Legend came out with a song called A Good Night. Uh, and the minute yeah. I heard it, first of all, I thought it was going to be a bigger dance song. I thought it would be. Yeah. But the fact that it never really hit. Um, so I know this is kind of old school, but I'm, I'm uh, or rudimentary. No, I, I, yeah. But I'm playing it from my phone. I love this song. Have you seen this video? Yeah, it's oh, it was. Is that a that's an explicit version? I don't play that version, oh. by the way. John Legend <laughs> just said the F word. I play an edited version. Uh, I have seen the video, and he, you know, he mentions marriage in it, which I think makes it even better. Right. For uh, I, I, I didn't realize it was an explicit marriage version. and boning. Um, yeah, <laughs> you look so, kind of red right now. <laughs> um, I, I think it's a cool song, and it, like I said, the minute I heard it, I was like. That's a new. I, I was like, unless this song hits as a dance song, that's going to be yeah. a uh, a big cocktail hour song. Or I should also mention, I there's another category of music that I call doors open. That mm. is the 20 minutes or so that I play when people are moving from one room to the next. Oh. That is also very essential there. So I might play a good night during cocktail hour, but I also might yeah. drop it during what I call doors open. Doors open. Yeah, yeah. but my doors but my goal during doors open and cocktail hour are pretty much the same thing. 
Right, right. Same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and for me, Doors Open would be, right, uh, an extension of these cocktail songs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just uh, reel off of just a couple of, uh, of pretty obvious ones. Um, and, and the first one, uh, I know people probably play James Taylor during cocktail hour, but uh, James Taylor from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, so... And I play there uh, three out of four Saturdays. So Carolina, in my mind, is like a, a staple for when I play there. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it just is appropriate for where we are, you know, being in Chapel Hill. Um, that's kind of one of my go-to instead of something else by him. And then I think also uh, just based on, you know, if you go through his catalog, um, there are so many Bob Marley songs that have the term love in it. You're just missing a golden opportunity, especially here in the summer. No matter where you are, it's summer. You know, I mean, let's say in the United States, it's summer. Uh, you know, One Love or um, Could You Be Loved. I mean, like, the, you're missing a prime opportunity during, especially the summer months, to play Bob. So right. those are just a couple right off the top of my list. I, I mentioned this, that in the, the uh, seminar I did, that playing to your setting and your surrounding is yes. extremely important. And to me, the most uh, obvious example is summertime, especially we do a lot of events, you know, where I'm, I'm miles from the, the shore. shore here, yeah. where the, the, shore. the cocktail hours overlooking the shore, uh, <laughs> cocktail hours overlooking the beach and overlooking the ocean, man, if I'm not playing to that setting, um, it's almost like I'm oblivious. Another one that, right. Yeah. Another one that fits into this. Is the Kid Rock all summer long? Yeah. Um, I, again, I just think this has such a cool vibe to it, and people know it, and they sing along, and it samples. What did he sample in this? Sweet Home oh, Alabama no, uh, and, no, no. and, uh, and Warren Zemon. Warren Zemon, yeah, yeah. yeah. Werewolves but, in London. Yeah, but I also um, think there's a sample of um, of uh, Sweet, Sweet Home, Home Alabama. Alabama. In there there is. I think he. That's yeah. the chorus, basically. Um, or like, so. That's a great one. That to me, I agree. Bob Marley in the summertime, absolutely. A little Jack Johnson's great. Yeah, uh, but also long to me is a great track for that. I thought you were gonna. I'm playing on my phone. I thought okay. you were gonna play little sorry. samples. You I think mine's gonna just sound superior. That's okay. We you, have yours that. will because you you have the right <laughs> wire. You're using two different computers. I'm only using one. Uh, that's correct. Yes. Let our uh, listeners a little something there. I'm, I love uh, I love old soul. Also during cocktail hours, so I'm going to kind of overlook, you know, my, my temptations, uh, four tops, Marvin Gaye stuff. Right. But I also love these guys that sound like they're old school uh, or from that 60s era. So Leon Bridges, if you're not playing him, uh, this is great cocktail stuff. Uh, can you hear this, Mike? This is Better Man. Yep. This dude just... In the wrong era. I don't want much. I just wanna be a better man to my baby. Mm-hmm. I just love that man. That is all. Awesome. Yeah, always get people coming up. Uh, well, who's I just this? had his song "Coming Home" as a wedding song. I love that song. Yeah, uh, "River yeah, Take Me to the River." That's Saturday another night. good one. Yep. Yeah. Hey there, sorry to interrupt this awesome podcast, but I wanted to read a review for you that I received recently. Let me see if I can find it. I get so many. Oh, oh, here it is. Mike and his crew went so far above and beyond what my wife and I ever could have imagined for our wedding. The whole process from start to finish was professional, engaging, and fun. And then this client writes, the event planner is awesome and allows you so much time and flexibility in planning your event. That's the type of feedback we get all the time. A, how awesome we are. B, how helpful and cool our online planner is. And while it looks like we have this super cool online planner, it's just DJ Event Planner branded for us. So if you're not using DJ Event Planner, besides missing out on the most powerful CRM sales tools available to our industry, you are missing out on this type of feedback from your clients. Let the great planning tools available from DJ EP blow them away before their event, then you blow them away at the event. That's a winning formula. Head to djeventplanner.com right now and start your free 30-day trial. Go ahead. Joe and I will wait for you. And then I guess kind of a parallel. I just had these back-to-back in this particular little podcast mini crate here. Uh, 
that is more from the it's not a Motown song, but I still love, love, love this. And I think it got bigger and bigger uh, when Bill Withers passed away. Wasn't that last year? But lovely day like this. I is think it was great. during. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was during the, the uh, shutdown COVID era. Really I think it was. Too, yeah. But yeah. Just a great song, you know, again, especially yeah. like Mike said, with that doors open. And a lot of people really still don't know who this is, you know what I mean? Like, they just know, like, oh, man, this is such a great song. Anyway, you get the point on that I'm all about sending the right message during this time, too, because if people are, if they find themselves singing along, and what a great... A lovely day. A lovely lovely day. day. The so, whole I mean, end of that, he's find, just saying yeah, that over and yeah. over. If that if they find you, themselves singing along, and then they yeah. realize, oh, I'm singing about a lovely day. Um, yeah, that's great. You know I'm a big Michael Fronte fan. Yeah. And uh, a lot of his stuff is too obscure. People wouldn't recognize it. But um, his biggest hit yeah, really I is love this. Say Hey. Um, I love this. And again, this just had, to me, it has the, it's such a cool vibe. I'm not wasting a great dance song because I wouldn't nope. play this later. But, um, and again, if people know the lyrics and they sing along, you know. I'll be back I love that so, so much. It's a great song. Great so track. much. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I love, uh, so Stand By Me um, is one of my favorite songs ever. Benny King. In fact, I think, I know that's what I danced with my mom at my wedding. Oh. I don't know, eighteen, nineteen years ago. But I don't know why it took me forever to find this this Otis Redding version, which is it's a totally different feel. Uh, so this is from '64, I think. Stand by me, maybe came out three years, two, 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 two the original came out two or three years before. But I love this version. <laughs> It's got a little more swing to it. Like down here, people would shag to this. Right. And I don't mean yeah for our English listeners. I think our, our regular <laughs> listeners know what shag, what you're, when you say shag. When the night nice. has come and the land is dark. I just love that version. There is a salsa version of that. Uh, Ooh. Prince Royce does. Yeah. I, I have played, I actually, I just got a request for this this past weekend, but I have done this during um, cocktail hour for, uh, you know, again, a summery vibe. Oh, damn. That's sexy. Super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Again, picture like you yeah. know, when you're looking over a beach and the waves are coming in and I drop this. Uh, it's, it's a cool vibe. Yeah, that's that is Prince a Royce, super cool vibe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you want me to do another one, Mike? Yeah, well, let's do one more cocktail and then we'll move on. Okay. Uh, oof, man, that puts me on the spot. Oh, all right, you can do more. Let me. I'm gonna do. I'll, I'll do. I'll put these kind of together. So I would. I love both of these. I don't. My. my I'm not good. Like Dave, I feel like. And Bonus CC could tell you like what year a song came out. I suck at that. But I love, love, love uh, this "Walking in Memphis." Mark Cohn. Remember this song? Is it Michael Cohen? Uh, Mark Cohn. Mark Cohen. Yeah. Mark Cohen. Put on my blue suede shoes and I boarded the plane. Touchdown in the land of the Delta Blues In the middle of the pouring rain And it kind of picks oh up. God. It's a great That's, song. There's a great line in that about, are, are you, um, do you believe in God? And yes, yes. About, uh, tell tonight. me. Yes, God, oh bro. God. I got chills is, just now. Yeah, me too. It's, it's near the end. Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, so I, I would kind of alternate between one or two, but dude, freaking Steve Winwood, Higher Love. Great. See, I've, now, almost, this I've almost played this during dance, almost. I, I, I stopped playing this because I play the Whitney remake a lot. Does that yeah. matter to you? I, I think sometimes I overthink stuff like that, but I, I pulled this out of my cocktail hour crate when the Whitney right, remix right, 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 dropped right. because I don't want to play right, the same double. song twice, even though it's two completely different I can versions. see where you would say that. And I would say it doesn't matter because they're so different. You'd say I'm overthinking it. And I, overthinking I, I'm it. Sure but I but okay. But while we're on this, while we're on this, this is a great. This is a great topic. It's not even a topic, but it's just a question. Okay, let's say bride and groom, bridal party comes into. I'm going to use I got a feeling yeah, as if it yeah, was. I see where you're going yeah. with this. I will play it again later. Yeah. yeah thank you. That's all. Yeah. That was the question. But see, to me, that's <laughs> or crazy in love or whatever. Like because we only played a snippet. 
during right. uh, the intro. And right. it's kind of their song. So usually when I do play it again later, I will dedicate it or say, this one's going out for a bridal party. You know what okay. I mean? So I, okay. I, it's kind of like okay. their song. Um, yeah. The only time I won't do that is if the bride and groom pick the song to come into and then it becomes like a spontaneous, like they dance to it with the bridal party and maybe other guests for three or four minutes. If I play a significant right. chunk of it, then I'm probably not going to go back later. If it becomes like a dance thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Same. Yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. La um, last, last. I'll give real... you a last cocktail. Okay. And, and this is yeah, yeah. right okay. up your alley. Uh, a little bit more modern. This is Adore You. Oh, I got that. Stuff. I was literally oh, get out of here. I swear to God. Look, look. I was like. <laughs> yeah. I usually I freaking use a, love this. Song. I usually use a remix of it. Okay, uh, I play the original. Yeah, but. I've got a I've got a quick mix from. That's Olsen too Hits. weird, man. Uh, I literally had it on deck, and I was like, oh, "Dude, if I, had I did, to go, yeah." Well, yeah. that's good because we're both also thinking along the lines of yes. We don't want to just play to the older people. Yeah, we don't want to be the hour. old man. Right. I want to drop it, some new stuff. Um, Khalid has a, a song. Was it Up All Night? I think um, mm. that I that I also play during. I love him. Um, yeah, dude, his voice is just. Yeah, I love amazing. that guy. And a young kid too. He's still yeah. yeah. He's yeah, still up all night 20s. that I that I play a lot during cocktail hour, uh, and also doors open because again, it's got a mid tempo vibe. But the younger yeah. people are going to go, okay, thank you. At least we feel included. You know, I'll give you uh, this is my honorable mention. Uh, my girl Amy Winehouse, which was to me like a super tragedy, but this, you know I'm no good. Yeah. I mean, just the drums alone. That's a tragedy, man. She was awesome. You know, here's what I've come to accept about tragedies like that. You can't have it with some people anyway. You can't have yeah. all the talent without the messed up part. If True. you cleaned up the messed up part, she probably wouldn't have been as mercurial. Enigmatic. As an right. Yeah. Right. So right. I, I just think Damn, you, it's, as a fan, we want to separate yeah. and we want them to be around forever. But Hendrix wouldn't have been as incendiary of a guitarist Great without word. the addiction and the living on maybe, I, even addiction is wrong but just the living on the edge he had to be an artist that lived on the edge and when you live on the edge especially when drugs and alcohol are involved you you, you know yeah. you walk on thin ice and every and sometimes some people are going to overdose so yeah i'm not saying it's not tragic but it's it's hard to separate the two. So um, some but I mean some even, artists even are you know here for a short time. You know? Even even artist wise in terms of like a Robin Williams or somebody like you know how depressed and troubled were yeah. even people like him you know yeah. but he was one of the greatest like it's very yeah I have a tough time processing depression. I mean I, there's a new documentary out about with uh, Anthony Bourdain mm -hmm. and uh, I I have a hard time with that one because I literally remember watching his show on CNN mm -hmm. and saying I would trade my life for, <laughs> for that guy's in a heartbeat yeah. because think about it he got to travel the world, world sample the greatest food in the world and make a ton of money because he was a tv star and he couldn't find happiness in that man, oh, man this is a this is probably a show in and of itself but yeah it's uh, tough, anyway man. hey guys this conversation with mike went so well we love talking about music so much we're going to break it up into two episodes part one will be cocktails part two will be dinner Thanks for listening to the PH DJ podcast with Mike Walter and Joe Bunn. We'll see you on the next episode.